where do you want to start? Because there's there's a lot of lanes to this highway. Yeah, we're going to go through all of the lanes because 85% of the people wanted us to do this. But let's start with the match. Mm -hmm. Let's start with making your first ever Grand Slam final against a 23-time champion in Serena Williams. If you don't think she's the GOAT of all time in women's tennis, you're probably just wrong. Serena Williams at home in New York with over 25,000 of her fans in attendance. I was beyond impressed with what Bianca was able to do time after time after time. And that was provide responses. And if I'm not mistaken, and you can correct me on this, Sixero, broke the will of maybe one of the strongest willed competitors we have ever seen in tennis men's or women's. The way Andrescu took on this 23-time champion was to go right after her. In fact, the 19-year-old who has wowed people with her aw shucks attitude after the match said she thought she may have intimidated Serena Williams with the way she attacked her. And every time Serena Williams thought she had some sort of answer for Bianca Andrescu, Andrescu had the response to the answer, and to me, that's what made this so damn impressive, was not only did she win the U.S. Open, she dominated the greatest of all time. Tim, you mentioned the comment after the match from Bianca about intimidation. Mm -hmm. Just to reinforce the point, would you mind if I played that short clip for people at home? What, people don't trust me? No, no, but I think it, it was a Saturday, maybe when the match ended, people kind of left and did stuff that night. Maybe they didn't see this. Maybe okay. I didn't see this. All right. I want to reinforce the point that Tim just made about the 19-year-old from Canada saying that Serena may have been intimidated. The game plan right from the start was to make her work for every ball and to get as many returns in the court as possible. And I think she was intimidated a little bit by it. <laughs> tell you something. Oh. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I love that so much. Let me let, let you were me, right to call for that clip. Let me tell you something, Gina Min. Yeah. This 19-year-old goes down to Flushing Meadows, New York, mm -hmm. in front of 80,000 people at Arthur Ashe. Okay. So it sounded like. Not one of them besides five people and her dog are rooting for Bianca Andrescu. Coco. Coco. And her, and her little dog, T Coco, too. I fell in love with the Coco. The dog was there. About 10 Canadians were there. No one else in that stadium wanted her to win. Every homer at ESPN calling that didn't want her to win. Yeah, it was 26,191. I said 25,000. I was Whatever. probably being generous Whatever. to the amount of Canadians that were there. She went in there, took the first set, then felt the brunt. Oh, you. Then felt Hurricane Serena down 5 1 in the second set, win a game, break a serve, win another game. New York, the power of New York. Just, just, just cascading Con down upon the court at Arthur Ashe. Concrete jungles make you feel brand new. It's New York. She could hear the noise a little bit. You could see it in the scoreboard. It was affecting her. She got sloppy. Any 19-year-old on earth from any other country who's not made of the stuff Bianca Andreescu is made of is intimidated by a purple spike lead. Am I allowed to interrupt your yelling, or do you want to keep yelling? I'd love to keep yelling. Okay. Because that's where it should all end it. She blows a 5-1 lead in the second set. She should have lost that match. But she's not like you or I. I have a different take on the 5-1. Okay. When do I do that? Later? Look, give me a second. Okay. Go ahead. She won that match despite all that coming down upon her. I agree with that. She is a U.S. Open champion. It's kind of a fact. It's a so, fact. So is that one. Here's yeah. a hot take. She beat Serena. <laughs> hot take. Hot take. But what I'm telling you is she broke her will... Not just Saturday, but on the final Sunday of the Rogers Cup. Serena Williams could have continued, and she didn't want to. Oh, 3-1. Bianca up 3-1 showed Serena in four games what she found out over two sets. Bianca's better than her. And she bottled it in Toronto because she knew she wasn't going to win that match. And then this whole emotional card was played, and it was a great story. What I saw Saturday was proof that this was a 23-time Grand Slam winner who said, I don't want to deal with this kid because she scares the hell out of me. 
And Bianca Andreescu has now not only become a champion at the age of 19, but is bringing one, a legend in her sport just completely down. And let me just rewind you for a second here, because I think I agree with you. Oh, okay. I, I never thought that you didn't think it either, because you thought that Serena Williams no. was going to win the match. Yeah. But as it played out, and as you saw the way Bianca took it to Serena, you began to realize that, may, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think you're right. I think Serena was scared. At this point in her career, she was scared. And you know how I know it? My different take on the 5-1. My different take on the 5-1 was Serena looking at what happened in this match. Down one set and then 1-5 in the second set. Serena said, I can't do what I do to everyone else on this tour. And that is wear them down with this huge serve. This, this woman, and I, I was going to say this young girl, this 19-year-old, this woman was taking it to her. And Serena said, I have to hit perfect shots. I have to turn on the best tennis that I possibly can conjure at this juncture in time. And that's exactly what she did to get it back to 5-5. Five, five. And couldn't continue it because Bianca Andreescu at 19 years old is that good. Serena had to turn on the best tennis that she possibly had. And she still couldn't beat Bianca with 25, 26,191 behind her. She's walking. She's walking into a den. And no one wants her to win. Among the 25,000, aside and, from a handful of people, and, and she's not that phased and by it. And never been in that den before, right? Yeah, prior to this tournament. Prior to, prior to this year, prior to this tournament, like Indian Wells. Pretty big, but not like that. Maybe fifth not major, like understood, I get it, but not like this. Not with this crowd, not with those shining lights, not with all of Canada jumping on the bandwagon. Like, I was at my kids' hockey tournament this weekend, and I had people say to me, for probably the first time in my life, I'm going home because I want to watch women's tennis. Yeah, absolutely. When was the absolutely. last time you heard that from a bunch of hockey fans? Rarely. And I heard it. Yeah. I'm going home to watch women's tennis. Bianca had every reason to say, you know what, finalist U.S. Open, I'm good. Instead, she becomes the first Canadian to ever do it. And all of the firsts, that might be the most impressive. And to do it where she did it against who she did it, I'm blown away. I am, I am blown away with what I've seen over these couple. And I kept saying, uh, Bianca's battle, Bianca's battle. And I thought it was kind of the storyline going in. I never knew she had it like that. I didn't know that either. I, and I, Serena probably didn't know it either. I think she showed a lot Serena of people. Found Serena found out. Serena found out. The world found out. Better yes. believe it. Tim, now, I mean, we're, we're going to keep on talking about Bianca here and, and big picture in this country where this stands. Yes, I'd like and, to. And, Tim, I'm not one to focus on, well, the Americans are angry take. Because mm -hmm. I, I find that a lazy take at times for Canadians to have. Because, A, it's predictable. Mm -hmm. B, it's really easy. Right? And like, of course, ESPN probably wanted Serena Williams to win. Like, right. that's not a shock. That's a business decision, right? right. Like, we got we to remember this is going on here. This is a money-making machine. But I want to play for you Serena at the podium after it was done. Because of all the comments I heard after the match, out of everything I read, out of everything I took in, nothing bothered me more than the clip I'm about to run for Ooh, you. okay. I love Bianca. I think she's a great girl, but I think this was the worst match I've played all tournament. And it's hard to know that um, you could do better. And so it's it's just taking it, whatever. I don't even know what to say. Excuse after excuse after excuse that was disrespectful to Bianca. That was disrespectful to what just oh, happened. I, I completely That disagree. was absolutely ridiculous how this champion, for a better part of a year now, cannot beat anyone when it matters, and it's never her fault. Whether it's Naomi Osaka or whether it's Bianca Andreescu, no one beat her. She didn't play well. Things didn't happen. Ump chair umpires conspired. It's one thing, her back. It's one thing after another. The deal is that girl was better, is better, and will be better going forward. Serena has not won a Grand Slam since 2017. She's done. 
She's done. The kids have caught up. This is a bitter champion who's making excuses left and right, and it is, it is unworthy of someone of her level. She's one of the greatest athletes, Serena Williams, ever. Got to have a bit more grace in this. There's a new generation coming in. Just acknowledge it. And all I've seen for the past 12 months is that kind of stuff. And it bothers me to no end because she's better than that. She's done amazing things for community, amazing things for the sport. She's one of the greatest athletes ever. She doesn't have to keep going to that. At some point, she is going to leave. At some point, she's not going to win every tournament. And guess what, Jack? I don't know why I just called you Jack, McAuliffe. My name's not Jack. He's not Jack. The time is now. Not even my middle name, no. The time is now where that has happened. And I think we're going to move on from this era. And I think she needs to do a little bit better job of bringing in some new people here with a bit more respect than she's doing. Because I don't see that. I see excuses. I see it's the chair umpire. I see I didn't play well. I see it was my back. Right. And it bothers me. I just wanted to say that. I think a lot of people will gravitate towards that. And I think that's wonderful hot take television. I also think you're dead wrong. I think she's scared. I think that underplayed. That's part of it underplayed in all of tennis is how much of a mind game is played throughout it from set to set to bathroom breaks to medical breaks to wherever you cross over the there is a huge mental aspect to Serena's dominance and what Serena is attempting to do is tell Bianca that I didn't play my best and the next time that I face you you're going to get my best she this is the ultimate compliment She's scared, and she's telling the world by saying, I didn't play my best, that I've got more. And you're sitting here saying, I've seen it. You don't have any more. I don't know. Listen, I will never underestimate the heart of a champion, especially a 23-time champion. So I don't, I'm not going to say that she's done, because I've heard you say that about Tiger Woods before and anyone another major. Anyways. I was right for a long time, though, about it. You can't be right about something for a long time. I was right for so time. long. And I then get, be wrong about it. I at least get a half it. point. No, I was right wrong. for 12 years. No, I no. got a half point. No, no. Finny, do I get a half point for being right for 12 years about Tiger? A quarter point. A that, quarter point. Shut there's up. There's no quarter points. Finny? I'm not even happy. See, 15 we're both, love? We're is that what you're talking you about here? Yeah. 15 love? He gets a 15 love, and Thank then he loses, the, he loses the game 40-15. Yes. Yes, he does. Continue. still upset by that I think that was proof that she knows that this young generation is coming and I thought she knew that with Naomi Osaka and I think if you look at Coco Goff and this next generation of young I mean you could even put Belinda Bench in there at 22 years old there's this new group look at the top five Bianca is now top five in the world which is an amazing story I mean we all heard the 150s number she was ranked 178th in the world last year now she is top five and outside of Ashley Barty who will probably stick around there for a while and Naomi Osaka I could see Bianca being number one soon soon all right there's not a lot of points for her to defend listen the WTA ranking system is kind of caca, and we all know that. There's not a lot of points right now for Bianca to defend. You lose points if you don't go as far in tournaments, right. but Bianca, because she didn't go that far, is going to gain a lot of ground, and that's why she has gained the ground that she has. But the way I saw her play and what she did to what you and I say is the greatest tennis player of all time, I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about a number one in the near future and I don't want to put that on her right I just believe it look being number one not obviously, trying to put that on her no you're, well but a lot of people, just think a lot of people are saying it as well like from what we saw health permitting well l l let me I want to talk Bianca's about gonna get there I want to talk about that because to me that's the only thing that matters I've seen Milos enough I've seen Canadian tennis players enough who had all the promise on earth and right now cannot stay healthy and finish tournaments. All I wish for Bianca is literally health. I could care less about the world number one ranking. Now, right. it helps you in tournaments, don't get me wrong. I know how that works. No, I get you. I, all I want for this young woman is to not turn out the way some really promising Canadian tennis names have turned out health-wise. That, that would scare the hell out of me. Serena doesn't give a bleep about number one anymore. No. Serena's no, been there, done that. She's just different. counting majors. That's all she's doing. So hopefully that is in her corner hopefully 
And we see bandages here and there. And this, you know, listen, she plays a tough game. She's a powerful player. Things are going to be sore by the end of a tennis season. I understand that. But that's all I want. I could give a damn about first over, first in the world. That's, I'll save that for other people. I want her to be healthy. I want this to continue going to Australia and Paris and the rest of the tennis season and just keep it going. What a vibe. What a vibe Saturday, McAuliffe.